Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome back to the program. Welcome back to Top Black TV. If you're new to the channel or the channel is new to you, please do like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever Top Black TV drops another video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Bill 6666. That's the new bill that allows the authorities to enter your home and take you to the hospital for testing. Not only that, it allows strangers to enter your home and take you to the hospital. This is Talk Black TV. And using the tools of technology to oh. isolate individuals uh, that have uh, either uh, been exposed or quarantined people that are tested positive. And that's just going to require an army of folks, an army of folks. Is that what they're calling it? Experts have long used contact tracing to stop epidemics like Ebola, and they're trying to use it to stop COVID-19. But getting already suspicious Americans to cooperate so that it works effectively will be tough. The CDC even gives contact tracing the creepy term of public health surveillance. Using either Bluetooth or location services on your phone, contact tracing apps record who we've been in contact with in case people nearby have COVID-19. They are already using it to track certain foods like pigs, for example. And they're also using it to track refugees. Why wouldn't they use it to try to track you and me and the rest of humanity? Okay, if you're Nations not like Singapore are already using it. Get peace of mind for you and your family through community-driven contact tracing. Now, House Bill 6666, the COVID-19 testing, reaching, and contacting everyone or TRACE Act would give $100 billion to local organizations to help with testing and contact tracing by funding door-to-door -door outreach. Contrary to what some believe, it does not allow anyone to enter your home or allow the government to remove anyone from your home because of coronavirus. But could the government legally force us to take an app on our phones? Right now, again, I emphasize the right now, Apple and Google are saying that this is a completely opt-in system, meaning that when you have that phone in your hand, you would download the app, you would then take the app, you would turn it on, you would turn on your Bluetooth, and then using Bluetooth, it would pick up anyone else who has this app on their phone. And if you now come in contact with someone who later determines to have COVID-19, the app will tell you, hey, you came in contact with this person. Well, in theory, that app is also telling government agencies or nonprofit agencies or medical agencies that you also had contact with this person at some point in the past two weeks. So under this theory, your mobile phone, your cellular phone, is being used to essentially track your movements as well as the people around you and then determine whether or not you are now a danger to the public because you came in contact with this person. Professor Brad Jacobs, a constitutional expert at Regent University, says no. We do have protections against searches and seizures by the government. The Supreme Court just a couple years ago ruled uh, that the uh, government can't use pings off of cell towers to tell them where someone is without getting a warrant first. But could the government restrict your freedom if you don't use a contact tracing app? Maybe. There are also plans that will ensure that you do not freely travel, nor will you be able to really go anywhere till we get to that full vaccination. Normalcy only returns when we largely vaccinated the entire global population. The Supreme Court has long held that no rights are absolute. No rights are absolute. No rights are absolute. The government can override a constitutional right, at least for a short period, 
if it can show what we call a compelling state interest, a compelling state interest. Michael Doherty, the CEO of LabMD, a medical testing lab who's been fighting federal overreach in his industry for years, is the author of The Devil Inside the Beltway, and he calls a tracing app Big Brother. It's It's a huge excuse to give the government more information and as we're seeing with who infiltrates our government they will violate our rights and and violate anyone's rights for political gain supreme court has long held that no rights are absolute no rights are absolute the notion that americans will cooperate voluntarily with a contact tracing app seems to be dead on arrival A recent poll showed less than a third of Americans would participate in tracing if it's run by the federal government. Thanks. Thanks. My boss is here as well, just so you know, he was... Why why the charade? Why why the guns? Why this? You are gunsters. Yeah, this is... This is my uniform. This is what they gave me to wear every day. Yesterday they told us, oh, we're going to check on you again. Yep. I'm like, come, but it's, come, come it's like nice. this. Come yeah. at least like this, we're like good. her. We're yeah. What is without She's anything? not a police officer. Just so you know, I'm a mental health worker from St. Joseph's Hospital. We are part of a specialized unit, the Rapid Response Unit of Hamilton Police Services in St. Joseph's Hospital. But That's why I'm dressed Come on this, this normal clothes. No, wait, what is this? My boss tells me this is what I have to wear, so this is what I wear. This is what they've given us, right? That's why it's called a uniform, so we all have the same why one on, so we can be identified. Why did you come at 8 o'clock? It's our time to go to sleep, actually. My apologies. My apologies for coming at a time that's not convenient for you. But why did you come? I, I was going to let you know. You, you, have some, you have some questions for me. And now, the reason why I'm telling you why we were here, my colleagues came up yesterday. They submitted a report based on your interactions. We have some concerns for your well-being and your safety. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So You're nice of you. It's so a, nice of you. It's not hypocritical, actually. When we are approaching God, we send you lots of information. Yeah, we, so, we send them all our demands. We mm-hmm. don't need. You know, they were ignoring, ignoring, ignoring for three years. Okay. Threatening us with a, uh, you know. This is the government. Yes, city. Okay. And uh, provincial, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, but you said you're concerned about our safety. Mm-hmm. We actually in a much, much better position than you. Okay. Because you guys are dead. Okay. You're more in trouble. Okay. You're more in trouble. Your soul is so dead. Your soul, by, like by, by doing this uh, pledge of allegiance, you annihilate your conscience. Mm-hmm. So whether it's moral or not, you pledged to do the what government or somebody else mm-hmm. is going to tell you to do because you swear so you I sold mean. your soul and that's so that puts you in actually very so I'm not here to get into that debate uh, uh, but what we I am are that, here to get into that debate okay that's I'm not we here to get into that debate you. what I'm, I'm here to let you know is that based on the concerns that were put forward yesterday with your report we have contacted a judge and the judge has issued, issued what's called a form 2 what that is to do, and this is, it directs me, as being a police officer, that I'm to take both of you to St. Joseph's Hospital right now for an examination. No way. No way. Unfortunately, no way. I don't have that, we don't have that discretion. You have no right. You have no right. You have no right to do that. You have no right. No. That's what this is for. That's I can let you know that's what I'm trying to say. Privacy. It's a form for the Ministry of Health that's we been backed by a provision. We don't care. We don't care. Well, that doesn't mean anything. We don't care. Well. Okay. That, that's neither here nor there if you care or not. This is my authorities and this is what I have to do. Wow. So I hope, I beg of you to come cooperatively. No. So you're not going to come cooperatively? I don't, so what is, you're not authority. Okay. Our God is authority. You cannot do this. That, I respect that for you. Unfortunately, my standpoint and my position is that I'm paid to enforce this. Okay, this is my job, this, this is my job, this no. is my role. I have an obligation. Wow, you are, I took, you I took are, an oath you are really to serve and protect. You serve and protect. You serve and protect. Who? Who? You serve and protect. Who? You are really and, I, and just to let you know, my, I'm here to protect you. The reason, the reason why I want to take you there protect is to protect you guys to make sure that you're safe. Wow. So what happens really? is we go to St. Joseph's Hospital. You're hypocrite. You speak to the doctor. You're hypocrite. You speak to the doctor. You're hypocrite. Okay. I don't believe I am. That's your that's your that's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. You are evil. Okay.
That's your opinion. You don't know me. Forcefully to take us to hospital. Well, Are I you don't kidding want, me? I don't want to do it forcefully. That's why I'm hoping that you'll assist me. Well, no. I would, I would not, I would rather not go hands on with you. I don't want to force you physically. Wow. This form, guys, just, and I'm a mental health worker, okay? I'm not a police officer. This is an involuntary examination of hospital. What this means is it's not in the police discretion any longer, or as a mental health worker, this form is valid, signed off by a justice of the peace. They cannot walk away. It's involuntary examination, you people, you people. examination. You people so sleep. what we're asking is Let we're asking sleep. for you know what I mean cooperation. We're going to go down. You're going to be seen at the hospital, and you're going to meet with the doctor. And that is what that form You are very sick. So your what the officer is asking today, we would really this, like to this, this is intrusion. This is we don't we are not we are not a threat. We are not no threat. No fascists in this case. You think again, that's possible? Again, you're absolutely entitled to your opinion. <laughs> There's no other way to look at it. Again, I'll explain it one last time. I, I beg of you that you accompany us. You come at night without, like without, a thief. anything turning physical. Are, I beg of you that you accompany willingly. You are thieves. Okay. You are Again, we're not, we're not here to get into a debate. We're not here to get into name call. Okay. And you're poor people. I'm an unbiased source and I'm doing this strictly for the concern of your safety. And that's why I hope that you will... Are we threat to anyone? Let me will pay. Just some advice, some advice. The easier that things go right now, the easier things can go at the hospital. The easier that things go right now, the easier things can go at the hospital. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm not you asking not, you to agree. You are not authority to us. Okay, and I understand that. That's your opinion. No. But I have, but I have no. Roger. No, don't, don't touch him. Don't touch him. Lay, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Don't touch him, just don't pet him. No matter what. Just let him sniff you and I'll see. <laughs> he just wanna play with you. That's a horrible thing. Horrible, horrible. I don't understand why you think that. I, I do I, not I, believe that's happening in Canada, which we have a lot of material for, you know, people. This is stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a question. You have questions. I don't agree. I'm, 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 I'm acknowledging. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you. You're conscious. You're conscious. You're okay. Can I? I and it's also your fault. I'm not going to but as a mental health worker, I'm not a nurse. I don't know your dog. I don't know you guys. Is there any way out of courtesy, like the officer said earlier, that we can put the dog just so make sure nobody gets hurt here? I don't want to get bit. I don't want something to happen. I don't want something to happen to the dog. Out of courtesy, can we put it in a room so we can have a conversation, please? Did they put it all perfectly? Yeah, Thank, Thank, okay. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that, though. Thank you. Thank you. That was my concern. Yeah. What did you do? Okay, it's just in the bathroom. Now, just to get things sorted out. Listen, guys, I understand that you don't want to go, okay? 
I completely respect that. It's up to you what happens. You're going to have to go to the hospital. Then you talk to the doctor, and they make a decision, okay? We don't want to get hurt. You don't want to get hurt. Your dog's safe right now, okay? So once you're in the cruiser, if you decide you want your tennis downstairs, look after the dog, that's fine. We'll, we'll talk about that, okay? But for now, you have to get up. We'll have to go to the cruiser, okay? And we'll you have see. to go down and talk to the dog. We'll see. I, I respect your opinion, sir. Okay? It's not my opinion. I really do. It's a universal truth. Okay. You're a liar. You're a hypocrite. Okay. Do you understand that, though? Do you understand where we're coming from? We have no discretion here whatsoever. We don't want to get hurt. We don't are want you, you to get hurt. Are you a robot? I am not, sir. We're not going to say we're you not going to discuss that. You are. So it's up to you. you we are. can't be here for the next half an hour discussing this, okay? We need to get down to the hospital. The sooner we get down there, the sooner you can talk to the doctor, and the doctor can make a decision. Okay. I'm innocent. So she is innocent. You're not being charged with any crimes, sir. I was going to say this has nothing to do with any type of crime. You're forcing us. Can I explain to something? To go to some kind of doctor. This has nothing to do with your standpoint, your beliefs, what's going on with your 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 um your standpoint forcing, with the government. Your you're taxes. forcing our that body has to, do with any to of that. move somewhere. It's a force. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We are. We agree. We are against our but will. We don't want to have to physically force you. Okay. I don't have we to have listen to you. We do, sir. Because otherwise, no. we have to go hands on. No. We have to handcuff you and put you in the back of a cruiser. Because you are not my authority. Because not, you're not our authority. Our authority is God. We're acting under our authority. Okay. I don't care. And I respect you. Don't understand. You I don't, don't care. that authority. I don't care. But we do have that authority. I don't okay. Care. So who wants to go first? So this is going to happen, folks. But it's just a matter of how you, how you, you want to go barefoot. Okay. Can you stand up, please, sir. Whatever you want. Can you stand up, please. No. You have to stand up. Can you stand up, please? Please do this. I beg of you one last time. I'm going to ask you. Stand up on your own. Just put your hands behind your back, please. Thank you. You know, sick people. God just did this a uh, long time ago, and a uh, long time ago, let us see that our brothers and sisters. And is that okay? Is that too tight? Ma'am, would you like to put that in? Put the mic. Put the socks and put the for later. No, it's okay. Go for it. Okay. You, can you stay, stay still and walk? You, what you guys want to do about the dog? You will pay for this. Leave him home. Open the bathroom. Okay, so once we're ready to leave, I'll just open the bathroom door and then. Okay. You understand? We have to act on it, right? We have no discretion. Then you are. But wait, we don't understand it. If them things are me infected, because me come in contact with somebody else who infected. Oh, I'm in my house with no mask. So what? Them can't get infected too. So me say, them people here can't just come to my house, all five, six of them, with them big, dirty, thinking shoes, for me carpet, and come take me, I'm a girl, out of my house. Just so. Then, suppose me and my girl, I get ready to, you know, go do it, you know, the little thing, and my door not. For real? Why well, I may I tell you? So, is this test compulsory? Does this mean that every single citizen now has to get the test? Let's assume that they say, yes, we're now making it a law. Every single person has to get the test. Um, does that mean they'll be giving out passports, um, giving out uh, COVID ID cards uh, once we take the test, say that we completed the test? Does that seem logical to you? How long do you think that will take for every single person in America, 330 million people, um, uh, the majority of them healthy? Uh, to go get tested for something. Uh, is that the sort of society that we want to be in where people are getting um, ID cards to say, I got tested for COVID-19? And then there's this. What if you test positive? What if you are a person that is a carrier of COVID-19?
What's really interesting about this this new bill, HR 6666, is this part of it. Listen to this. this, part of it. Listen to this. So the money goes to applicants who agree to bring in individuals to carry out activities funded under this section to hire residents of the area or the community where the activities will primarily occur. What they're essentially saying is that they're going to create an army of snitches, an army of monitors who will monitor everything that's going on in the community and trace people and track people to their homes using people in those communities which is a fairly interesting idea. It's not as if you have people coming in from the outside who are these scary government people. It's people you're around every single day in your own communities. Listen to this. We are beginning a program today which will certainly grow into something larger and larger, and that is a community contact tracing program. We've done contact tracing all along. That a contact is a person who's been exposed to someone that we document to have the COVID infection. When we find someone who has a COVID infection, those people are immediately isolated, are immediately isolated. But we also work with them to figure out who their contacts were. Uh, but the purpose of this program is to bring on people. We may bring on up to 50 or even more as the program grows and as we see the needs for it. As we do more testing, we will find more and more people who have COVID-19 and again, we'll isolate every one of them and we'll isolate every one of them and we will find every one of their contacts, find every one of their contacts and we will make sure that they stay quarantined, make sure that they stay quarantined and we'll check in with them every day. We're going to do a more complete job and we're going to do a more meticulous job of making it less and less possible for others in the county to run into someone with COVID-19 infection. A mandatory vaccine, but the vaccine is going to carry the mark of the beast implant. And every person is going to be ordered to be vaccinated. And anybody who resists vaccination uh, obviously will be ostracized from society, but possibly could be uh, imprisoned, uh, imprisoned for refusing, refusing an order. And parents, uh, parents will see their children taken, taken away from them, taken away from them. I mean, Bill Gates, he's always been a vaccine freak. Vaccine freak. Things can reopen if, thing, if, 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 thing, if, if, if we do the right things in the summer, but it won't be completely normal. You'll still be very worried. You know, we may decide masks are important, although right now they're in short supply for health workers, so people should not uh, go and, and hoard those. But the capacity of that can be brought up, so it may be something that, like China today, everybody who's walking around uh, is is wearing one of those. We'll have a lot of unusual measures mm -hmm. until we get the world vaccinated. Until we get the world vaccinated. Now he wants to implant a, a digital device, a microchip, a, a nano-sized microchip in the vaccine. This is stuff I talked about 15 to 20 years ago, and and people said, "Oh, that's that's too far out. That that's that's crazy. Uh, they they, they would never do stuff like that." But here here we are today, and it's it's reality. I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. I'm sorry. I don't want to comment on that. Be right. nice. He's going to be pulled in. And one of the articles I wrote, I said the law enforcement community will enforce the new world order. The entire global population. <laughs> but also uh, to those contacts of those who present some risk. Uh, both for further testing and, uh, you know, precision quarantine or precision isolation. And, uh, you know, precision quarantine or precision isolation. What difference at this point does it make? Who's a recovered person? Who's a vaccinated person? So we've all talked about not getting the vaccination. That's clear. But you may not have a choice. So these are all really specific actions some of which we're starting to already see take place in the in the bill that was passed 
uh, just recently. There are also plans that will ensure that you do not freely travel, nor will you be able to really go anywhere till we get to that full vaccination. Normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population, the entire global population, the entire global population. Now, one of the problems with this whole theory, I just want to break this down for a second. One of the problems with this whole theory is that contact tracing at this stage in a pandemic or a, a, a virus being loose in society, I don't like using the term pandemic because it's, I think it's so um, politically charged, but when there's a virus in society, the only time you would actually medically use contact tracing would be in the very, very early stages. We're talking about, for instance, in South Korea, when, when the virus first went into South Korea, it was carried by a woman who was in China. She went into South Korea. She went to this massive church that they have in South Korea of like 200,000 members, and she came in contact with members at that church. So contact tracing might be used to say, okay, she went into this church. She connected with all these people in this particular location who all went back to their communities. Contact tracing could be used to say, let's determine whether or not that woman um, came in contact with how many people and where they went in order to figure out where the virus is now going. That's what you would do in the early stages if you believed in this in this science. However, at the stage that we're at in the United States, contact tracing is completely useless because we have number one, a massive amount of the population that's already been exposed to the disease. Because we don't do testing and instead we're trying to do tracing, we don't even know how many people have the disease. That's first. Second of all, it also doesn't make sense because we know that people in pretty much every state have had some form of exposure to the virus. And what we have found through the few tests that have been done on this, the few uh, bits of data that we've collected from the study that was done at USC or the doctors uh, in Bakersfield, California, what we know is that a larger portion of the population has antibodies already in their system than we had thought. So once people in the population have antibodies in their system, contact tracing is pointless. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Talk by TV.